Wrong, wrong. Okay, I don't know if there's anybody there. If you are, let yourselves be known. <clears throat> okay, I don't know if there's anybody there. If you are, let yourselves be known. <clears throat> One. Okay, can anybody hear me? Good, that's great. Piccadilly, John, good evening. Nice of you to join me. <laughs> yeah, good on you. Nice. Bex Hill West, it's on my train, guys, coming over. Good on you, guys. Thanks for the support. And Wendy, of course, always there to support me. Loud and clear, that's great. Really enjoyed the waterfall. John, I'm so pleased because... It's something very, very new, and I wasn't sure exactly how that was going to go down. Um, but, um, yeah, so far it seems to be very, very well received, so I'm at, over the moon for that. Okay, so we're almost on time. Wait another couple of minutes if everybody's all right with that, just to see if anybody else wants to come in and have a listen and have a watch, and hopefully it'll all go to plan. I've had a couple of hitches in the past where this part of it freezes and I have to go back in the system and start it all over again. But uh, hopefully we will not have that problem. So good evening, everybody. Um, right. <laughs> Just making sure nothing's going to go wrong. I'm sure that something will. I'm not uh, that optimistic. Uh, absolutely probably no but I'm gonna John that's a very good point and somebody else raised it the other day not on uh, on my YouTube but yeah um, all these dioramas that I will be building are going to be standalones one-offs ideas and thoughts but they are all sort of driving towards aspects of sand injunction and um, I um, <laughs> yeah, Wendy, I know. Um, but uh, part of what I'm developing at the moment on sanding, I've just started the decline down from sandling itself, coming down uh, the descent towards the high station. And between there, I want to put a bridge, not a, not a, a viaduct, but a small bridge, and allow the water to come underneath. But of course, I've got the hills beyond. And the nice thing is that about our area, uh, a good archaeological friend of mine, archaeological, geological, uh, said to me that the whole of the area is part of an ancient caldera and there are lots of aquifer springs that sprout from the hillsides and indeed they cascade down the hills near Sandling, not quite there, I've got to shift it all over, there's a little bit of leap of faith there, but I can have it cascading down in a hill stream uh, and then it can all come under the bridge and then end up in a beautiful, gentle uh, river scene. So that's part of that. And that so although the waterfall in a long story, story short won't actually be in the uh, layout, I might sort of later on eBay that or do something with it. I have no idea. Um, and um, yeah, I'll build something based upon it uh, into Sandling. Right, okay, so I'm gassing on and we've gone past our um, time of seven, so let's get cracking. Okay, so I put this up the other day, uh, a couple of days ago, just to give you an idea of what we're going to do. And it's going to be a watercolour. And um, hi, JC Brown. Excited to be watching from Austin. Oh, wow. Okay, we have international appeal. There you go, people. International Phil. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, Pause Creative Bridget. Hello, I'm here too. Great. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to keep saying hi, and I'm not going to get any work done. Right, okay. Now, then, the picture you're looking at is the full slide that I took, or the full image that I took. And the thing is, I can't actually point to bits of it. Um, but you can see to 
all along the bottom edge here that there is a lot of sort of bits of boats and stuff that are um, hanging in the side there and they're going to spoil the picture and if you look at the line of uh, the the horizon line it's where we're standing it's our sight line and that runs the top of that walkway through there you can see a couple of people on near to that other yellow boat and so that runs all the way through the center of the picture and i really don't like that that doesn't work hey luxembourg as well wow we are international truly international this is exciting okay before i get above myself let's crack on i'm going to put a very low horizon that is central as i say and it doesn't sit well so if you've got a picture that you want to do and the cent and the horizon line is too central or the information you want is too in the middle this way always move it one side or the other and put this as a horizon line lower in third so you've got more above or you can have it the other way around it doesn't really make a lot of odds so right let's let's carry on and i'm just going to suggest the top of this here and then the bank of the river which is coming up and along and it'll slowly disappear and come down that needs to be a little higher we can play around with that it's not too too it's not a problem but uh, before i get too involved with this let's just put the boat in i'm trying to look at the little picture when i got a great big version sitting right next to me so i don't know quite why i was doing that but there you go so the the dominant picture uh, the dominance in the picture is this lovely little boat and it comes up sort of halfway on her on the horizon or the bank so let's just put that in and just a nice arch top and then the bow will come scooping a little bit that way and so then the bow will come round to join it we've got the water something of that nature and then we can come all the way down and look towards the back or the stern and then there is this nice canopy that line i put there is actually quite useful because that will form the canopy it does come down a little bit and there is a top and a front and something of that nature and let's just set that up we don't go too mad we don't need to put too much in just enough so that we can see what we're doing and then a center pole and the rear pole of this thing there always handy to have your eraser ready to go and let's just shorten off this boat to somewhere like that and it's all the it's all front this boat is coming straight on at us so we've got a huge foreshortening to work towards and i think that works and we can always adjust a bit but i think that works quite well any questions people just put them in okay it's not a problem i'm happy to talk as i go and answer such things now the area here the water is quite a way up on there so let's take and change where I was going to put this in so let's put that through there somewhere like that and then we've got a nice set of light coming down this bank and the bank goes up and above that canopy and it's always looking at different points of your picture to give yourself uh, various points of reference before you move on you don't need to go crashing on and making mistakes just go in look at the points of reference and go for it now this boat if you look at the second boat it is ever so slightly higher than this one so if we put this one about here and let's go in somewhere like that slightly higher on the river so we've got our line of water about right really and then we can put the front there and let's look at the stern shape and the transom and the little bit of the rudder or tiller or whatever it's called it's got a nice piece of woodwork on the back here which we can not worry about too much now we can suggest it and then we can come down and around and up and then it will scoot round like so but you can't see too much of that because of this big tarpaulin that's holding down the um, boom and then this of course goes all the way up here almost out of the picture it's amazing how the foreshortening of this boat but this of course remains uh, as it should do so let's just suggest that into there and then you've got the front of the boat like so it's got a nice piece of ironwork and uh, safety fencing or, or whatever they call that I'm not too sure what they do call that now 
So don't make your boat banana. Make sure that the line of the keel is about right as it comes down through. So you don't want the top over there because it will look as though the boat's going around. You don't want it over here because it looks like it's going that way and looks a bit crazy. So get it about right. Just check your drawing before you proceed. Always worth doing all of those things. It's got a boom so or spit, so we've put that on. And then there's a little bit of white material on the top here. And the boat pretty much is drawing itself. I'm not sure whether I want to do anything with this one yet. I'm just looking at it in relation to this one. There's always something you see and you want to change and already I'm doing so. You can't get away with that too much. You can do a certain amount of erasing on this paper, but you do too much and you will destroy the um, surface and the lovely um, sizing that is put upon all these papers. It's the sizing that makes this paper accept the watercolor paint. Without the sizing, it's just uh, a molded paper and it will not take the paint in the way that you feel that it should do. I'm gonna bring that through there and then there is a dark passage in along that sheet and a little bit showing on the other side. So I think we got that a little better now. This angle should be coming up here a little bit higher, I think, something of that nature. So it's little adjustments, tiny little adjustments. There's a little dot there. Let's just put something suggesting that there, maybe a little post or something that may or may not be there, but we can put something there. It doesn't matter. It's our painting. We can do with it as we wish. I think that's the same in railway modeling, isn't it? Um, John, rule one. <laughs> well, it is becoming so for me and mine anyway. I don't know about many other people. I'm just going to suggest one or two ed uh, areas where the reeds are broken into in sense. And I need to just check this because I'm still not quite happy with the angle of this boat. So I'm going to just come back in, reassess my drawing. And I want that. I think that's probably a little better because it really is high on the top here. And I think I've got a little bit too much here. So I'm going to bring that to there and let that water there and then let that come around and disappear like so. And then we've got the eddy and what have you that's going off up the river. And there is a large dark tree. Binary Ben, hey, nice to see you, chum. Hope you're keeping well. In fact, I message for everybody. I hope everybody is keeping well and safe uh, in these current horrible times. Um, so, yes, nice to see you, Ben. I wondered if you'd show up. Okay, there we go. Let's just carry on. We've got a nice dart there. We've got a line of trees that are going up here. I don't want to make too much of them. I might just put one or two areas in here to suggest these more open form trees at the top. Hello, Luke. Nice to see you. Um, and there is a building here. Now, I don't know quite what that building is, but I'm just going to put in something that suggests a building. Whether or not I want it to suggest this building, I don't really know. Just putting a very steep angle in there, like something of that nature. Allow this to come down like that. A little doorway. I don't want to be too cliche with this and turn it into a house because I'm pretty sure that's not what it is. Um, this is a, a public car park. And we're gonna put a little fence through there just to suggest that fence there. And we will put some people in because they do make a picture. Now I'm gonna put them not quite central. I'm gonna put them to one side, just a quick shape. I'm gonna add a few more like so and um, a short one. Now the thing is that there is my horizon line. They should all be on the same sort of line unless they are distinctly short people. There is one short one in there. Good, glad to hear it. Yeah, glad you made it too, Luke. That's great. Right, I'm just gonna double check my drawings a little bit more and then I'm just gonna suggest there's a white uh, buoy uh, tender boy on the side there. I'm going to stick that on there. There's another one laying off into the slack water there. 
and they will be repeated so let's just look at uh, doing some enlarge slightly the reflection because as it's coming towards you it will get slightly and ever so slightly larger and distorted and then of course you've got these little boys that are almost up to their um, the ones they're reflecting like that and then you've got the front of the boat and that will come out and around like something like that and then we've got the top where the um, tarpauling is there is that little dark area that's above there that repeats that we can just shade that just so that we don't miss that when it comes to the painting and a little straight section and then we've got our last that will come off in that way and there's our, pretty much our reflection you don't need to go into too much detail not at this stage we want to put a little area here so we can reflect that into something there and then of course we've got this we've got our boat so let's just go i think partly what's worrying me about this is i really should have made it just a little deeper and something of that nature i don't think that's a problem we can still get away with that and uh yeah we, we can get away with that i think and let's just bring out our thing because if we can make this come down a little bit it becomes bit uh, a little bit more of our focal point by just extending what we're seeing in terms of the reflection let's just do it in this fashion see if we can get away with it i think that will work quite nicely and then we've got the nice bow wave that we can run through here we may lose that in the initial uh, coloring but of course we can go back in there with some gouache at a later point at the end of the painting and just restore what we've lost in terms of that little highlight there but i think that works quite nice i quite like that okay and we've got a nice light now the thing is that you can see a very nice light passage here somewhere in the water which is reflecting what we're seeing at the top um so um I'm going to put that all go in and we've got a little bit of dark now one thing you've got to bear in mind that you've got a light section on this bow and you're going to have a corresponding slightly darker if you look at the lights and darks they are a little bit closer together in terms of value in the reflection but to make that reflection really stand out then we may need to make this area through here somewhat darker there's a light passage there's a dark passage in here which is the darker section that we're going to paint into these reeds okay so we've got dark 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 darker session uh, section and then we've got the top of the bank here which we're going to run it all the way through like so there's the top of it reflected into the water we'll bring it all the way on down to here and then we're going to have one or two darks in this fashion along this buoy uh, along this little jetty platform and then reflected into the water like so something of that nature but then the whole of this area here will get quite dark as we come forward now i'm not putting in the bows and ever bits and pieces of the other boats they will just mess things up but we're going to leave a little bit of white water a little bit of white paper here and there when we start this process but that nice bit of light there works very very well we've got the reflection now this tree should be reflected over here so this tree actually has got to grow it's going to do a little bit of quick growth and we're going to put it in over here and make that come like that in fact because i've gone a little bit further we can take that out we can put in another tree like so there we just increased our trees and the reason i did that is because this one is reflected in here like so and we want to incorporate that into our initial picture because it makes sense of all this area here don't know how you are supposed to do reflection <laughs> well there you go you can have a look at that and hopefully by the end of this painting loop you'll figure that one out all right so now i'm going to start the painting process we've done the drawing i'm quite happy with that there's always something that you can check and do but if you've been fairly diligent over the course and the process of the painting and the drawing sorry then the rest should come into place now what i haven't done is the little supports in the back end of this so that we can have our canopy 
which will then go down and across to the back here like so and then we've got a slight little edge that we can see and something of that nature now we've got that part and of course we've got to have some guy in there steering this thing so there you go I don't know if there's any passengers in there but we're just certainly going to put a driver in there a skipper um, now we're ready to go so for the first things the sky in the picture that you're looking at is really quite bland and that doesn't really work so what I'm going to do is first mix up a little bit of cerulean blue that's a bit contaminated I gotta say I'm a little bit naughty when it comes to some of my colors look at that coloration there it should be a lovely blue and I've got everything but blue so there we go that's where it should be a little bit of that so it's a nice summer's day so let's make it a really lovely summer's day and make enough so make enough pigment so that you can do your wash coming down but before you start the wash you've got your pigment now come in with whatever greens you're going to use so we're going to use a little bit of lemon or oreolin in my case with a tap of that lovely uh, cerulean blue and a little touch of cobalt blue and then we've got one of our greens now this is only the first pass this color is not the end painting is merely part of the wash and the reason i'm painting or getting all these colors ready is so that we can then keep the whole process going and continue adding to these colors and let the wash come down trying to preserve some of the light areas but some of the highlight areas i'm not overly worried about so let's start off with our sky and it's a lovely summer's day and if we want to put some clouds in we can but because i feel that there is enough going on with everything else let's just make the sky a very simple affair let's just take it across maybe tap a little bit of um, cobalt into that color and let that come all the way down through these trees keep the bead going now the point is about watercolor a lot of people make this mistake is they start looking they don't mix up enough paint and they start looking at what they're doing and i'm just going to see if there's any other because i keep this keeps going wrong for me no we're still there okay so um yes so they this is the important part we can add colors in all the time that this is damp but this bead is extremely important if you let that dry up it's a done deal you've finished okay so don't let that dry up allow your colors to come in and spread down it doesn't matter there's a lovely top of our trees catching some light bring that through bring that in like so and we got a top of our trees now as i said to you this is merely the first coat the first layer on the process uh, we will just come around we don't we could go through there we don't really need to it's a bit of a waste of time a bit of waste of paint if honestly we're going to bring that all the way down through and into the top of our bank and all the way through to the bank so we're going to try and paint around some of this and some of these areas anything that's darker don't worry about it just go straight through it all right it's not a big deal just bring it all the way through like so and then try and protect anything that you don't really want to have another um, a lighter color on or else it can wreck it but don't let this be dry up if you need to mix more color mix more color be a little bit smart about it keep going keep adding bring that on down if you let it dry up and one day I will do a demonstration where you just have that all is good with the stream yes it is I'm really pleased for the way it turned out John to be quite honest with you I'm glad you enjoyed it and it seems to be going down very very well um, so far there's um, lots of lovely comments are coming on the, on the channel and that really does make me feel good because you know it's a lot of work well you know these things always take a lot of work you do with your own channel um, there's a lot of work to involved and so you've got to sort of um, weigh all that up with you know what you're doing and the final outcome of what you expect it to do for you so there we go there's that there's that 
let's take uh, this line all the way through the back here and take that all the way off into as it's going up the river Stour and into there around there and down there's our edge of our bank and we're going to come into this section protect the reflection if you can and bring that all the way down and into the boat so like that and we're going to change colors now we're going to put a little bit more grunge so i'm going to put in our blue but i'm going to come in with some of my uh, favorite color which is umbers i'm going to degradate that green a little bit and i'm going to come in here that needs to be a lot warmer so let's come in with some indian red into there okay and let's take that out in this fashion and just check where we are not too worried about the mask we'll probably stick that back in later but this is going to be the dark i'm going to put a little bit of transparent orange into there too just to warm it up i quite like that let's put some of that through like so and this is the darker water but now i don't want to completely lose everything so i'm just going to carefully come in here and work that up to this boat like so and into there just a little tack here and there and then i'm going to bring that through and a little bit more cobalt into there and just cool that down back again where it was that's good and just leave some areas now just let the white water do the rest of the work okay because you're creating the light the thing with watercolor paper you cannot get uh anything lighter than white paper in in acrylics and in oil you can do a certain amount of that but you can't recover everything so i've missed a bit there i'm going to traps tap a little bit out just to lift a little bit it stained it so it's never going to be as good as if i had not taken it off you've got a bit of a stain but you still will see a little bit of light popping through there so it's not completely lost but it could have been better had I left it. I'm going to bring that dark in up under the behind the boat here along through the back there and I'm going to let that skate because I don't want I want it fairly dry brush I take a lot of water out of the brush and allow the pigment to skate over the surface of this paper and that allows me to suggest that there is water breaking out through the back I could have done with a bit less of that painted we might have to go back in with just a touch of gouache at the end of this but then we're going to come back down with some more greens and more lovely umbers and just mess this up because we've got this lovely lovely green color of this tree and i'm going to put a little bit more oriolin into that just through there and let that come down and that really just excites that piece of water through here using a fairly dry brush just to soften up and mess the edge up just a little bit like so and that will come down the side of the boat a little bit there now we can actually reinforce this light later on and i'll show you how we do that i'm just going to come back in very very quickly just to finish this wash off just a few directional strokes through here with the brush fairly dry still that allows the suggestion that the water is a little bit more broken a bit more ripple a bit more movement in it as that comes off to one side and i think essentially we're pretty much there with that right let's have a look at the comments <laughs> yes luke it is a great lower layout i hear john that you're really cracking on with your double o gauge as well i need to catch up with that and see where you've got I'm really impressed with what you did with the end. Um, sorry, people who are non-railway related. <laughs> uh, you're going to get a little bit of that. Um, okay, so I'm going to let this dry up. Just take off any excess that's on your tape. The trouble is, if you leave it, it weakens the tape and paper, paint can get an underneath. So just blot that away. Now, if you've got a mute button, now's the time to use it because I've got to turn this on 
and somebody moaned at me yesterday or last time so just be warned this is going to be on for a few minutes or a couple of minutes while it's going so be protected <laughs> he said. Okay, that was a quick. Now you see this here. You see this little edge that's formed. That's created by um, this area here being a little drier than this area here when I put it in. And what happens is this wet area starts pushing its way forward and then starts to pick up the pigment of the green and pushing that forward until it runs out of steam. And that's why you get these bleed backs, these cauliflowers that people call them. Um, in this case it's not a problem some people use the cauliflowers to great effect and that's not a problem at all and uh, sometimes they can remain there and be quite unsightly and not what you wanted but in this case because we're going over with a much darker value there I'm not worried at all okay but just to tell you why these things actually happen okay so now I'm going to come in with the next value so let's start mixing up some darker greens and let's see where we're going to go with that for those I'm going to start using some ultramarine blue and make a lot of it because we've got a lot to do with this color lots of ultramarine blue and I'm going to put in a little bit of uh, Indian yellow which is quite a warm yellow and that's giving me this sort of dirty corrupted green now the reason that that is 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 the subject of a whole new video but color relationships are important and they will affect the outcome of mixes so in this case because the yellow is quite a warm yellow it's got a lot of red in it uh, in terms of coolness um, so it's quite lively but the blue is a warm blue and it's got a lot of it's got red and the blue so you've got red yellow and blue going on and that's going to corrupt and dirty the overall color I'm not too worried about that, so I'm just going to come in and I'm going to start uh, splashing around a little bit with the edge of the brush and just create some nice quick marks of semi-shade. These are sort of areas that are not quite um, the darkest parts, but we'll get to those later on. And there's quite a bit of coolness, so I need to uh, come back in and I'm going to put a little bit of cobalt on to one side. I want to come in with quite a bit of a cool value over here on this side and quite dense as well. So let's just take that all the way through and over the top there and just give that value. Knock that all the way down to almost the water's edge. It doesn't matter if it is because it's going to get a whole lot darker down there towards the end of the painting. Like so. So Luke, you're going to have to tell your grandmother to start tuning in. I think, I'm not sure if she's a bit of a technophobe, but um, we need to get a, you need to give her some instruction, young man, so that she tunes into some of these. Now I'm going to put, this tree is a big open form tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tap in one or two light marks of this because they're quite dark against the sky. So I'm just going to use that to create my tree forms over the whole of this area. Then as it comes back down, I'm going to add a little bit more blue and a bit of green. A lot more blue because that's just way too much. There we go. That's a nice amount. Okay. Hey, sis, and you are tuned in. Good, good. You should have made yourselves made me aware of that sooner. But good, thanks for joining us. Hope you're well. I'm sure you are. Okay, now I'm using the side. What you've got to be careful of, using the side of the brush like this, is not, it 
creates fantastic effects and it's great for doing trees as I'm saying especially open form trees but one thing you must bear in mind is that it's not the best thing for um, the brush itself working on the side because you're trying to destroy these areas here right into the ferrule and it you've got to be very careful how you do it we all know what's good and what's not good for us I mean we all love cream cakes but we know they're not good for us and doing this to a good brush is not the best for the brush but it does create some nice effects uh, when we're creating trees so I'm not overly worried but just be aware that you don't want to go too mad with this there's a lot darker form down here so I want to get in with some more uh, blues because there's a lot of blues in these lower branches I'm going to come in with a lot more blue down here but I'm going to leave quite a bit of this light color which I could have made a bit more lemony if I'm honest but I'm not overly worried about that and I'm going to come I'm going to leave my people I'm just going to work around them a bit more not too worried if I lose some of them there we go I've lost quite a few of them and I'm going to bring that across Lots, lots of pigment being used up. Now these are going to get a little cooler as they go further away and down behind this other tree. And what we've got to start doing here is we've got to look and investigate what we're going to do about the negative space. So we're painting the darkness of the tree that's way behind this one. So we've got to look carefully at painting negative space around this and we do not want to destroy that little bit of light that runs through there either so there we go we can tap a little bit into there create some shapes and forms and bring that all the way over the top there and then down to the edge of the car park and where these people are so let's come back in I before I forget and I am always bad at this I tend to forget to tell you what I'm painting on this is a high quality uh, 300 pound 640 GSM um, watercolor paper from Saunders Waterford it's a high it is good quality and the reason I use it is not because I just want to say oh I use a good quality paper not at all there's no point uh, of using a high uh, an expensive piece of paper when it does no different or if it does no different to a cheap one so the reason I use this is because it does have a much greater degree of um, pickup of water and holds that water working time is increased. So, you know, if you wonder why you should use a good quality paper, well, that is the main reason why. Um, and that is to give yourself a lot more working time um, like I'm doing now the dampness in here I can still pick this up and still work with it but I think we're pretty much there with this section of the painting maybe a bit more blue coming down in here on the lower parts of this one just tapping away and leaving a few nice cool marks coming down there which works and maybe just a little bit cooler still a little bit bluer in areas over the back here see how that's still spreading quite a bit in this paper and not working against hard lines okay so now I need to use the same sort of pigment colors the same sort of mixes down in this bank here and just to suggest that there are one or two areas in these reeds high and low coming down we need to get this dark right up behind this boat so that the light areas of the tarpaulin will then show up to the viewer and it just brings the whole boat out and across through here so that we can then put in uh, the white of the um, iron and the ironwork the railings bring that all the way through here nice little eddies of color into the edges of the uh, reeds dark around this part and portion of this boat and then quite a bit of dark up through here but it is quite cool it is quite blue let's take that all the way up through there up and over there and just I think that's probably enough really for the moment it's looking a little bit all over the place but we'll get there love the tree effect with the side of the brush yeah it's just not the best for the brush <laughs> I've got to say 
Uh, if you've got a cheaper nylon brush to do that with, I would suggest that's the time to pick it up. Um, all right, okay. I bet, Luke, you're, you're chomping at the bit to get out and see a few trains, aren't you, chum? It's just the same. You're, you're locked down the same as the rest of us. I'm missing some of these train videos you keep putting out there. Right. Um, I'm going to stop talking about trains, people. I do apologise. Not my fault that some of my train friends from the other channel are tuning in. I thank them that they are. I'm just going to come in quickly and put in the edge of this building just very fast, just to give it a base colour. Now that the other colour is dry, we can just put that in and leave that to set up. Maybe just come in with one or two other values just to mix it up a little bit on the side. And then just maybe just stick a little bit of cool light down through the top of the roof there, like that. And leave it for the moment. It will dry up, it will do its own thing. Um, my mother was painting until she was 93. Painting is for anyone at any age, very therapeutic. Yeah, absolutely. My oldest student, John, was 92. She's actually 99 now and still going and she still colours in books, albeit not in the sense of painting that she used to do. Um, and the only reason she stopped coming to me is that she had to get closer and closer and closer to hear what I was saying. And when it got to the point where I almost sitting her on my knee, we called it a day. Um, but <laughs> yeah, um, so she's a lovely lady and she's still with us. And I actually see her son sometimes when I'm walking the dogs in the morning over the beach. So lovely lady. Um, she's cared for in these in one of these nice homes. And uh, although she's got very severe Alzheimer's, I think or Parkinson's, one of these ones, dementia anyway. Um, I think I got the right term then. Um, she doesn't really know what's going on anymore, but she's just a wonderful person. Anyway, I digress. I'm going to let this dry up now and we'll start looking at going in with the next value. I'm going to put a very cool aqua colour. I'm going to use some cobalt teal. It's a favourite colour that's becoming fast a favourite of mine. And I'm just going to literally come in here with this um, tarp. And I'm not going to go over the whole of it. You can see that there are areas of the tarp that are catching the light. So I want to preserve the white paper uh, to show that and leave it just as it is there up over the top of the boom and let that come and drape down this side and leave it just as it is and i'm going to save the boat for a minute uh, because this is probably no it's not dry enough yet so let's go back in on the uh, color of the boat itself for that i'm going to it's quite an orange color so i'm going to use some vermilion but i'm going to use some indian red uh, Indian yellow, sorry, Indian red. And a little bit of Oriolin too. And just test it to one side. I think that's quite nice. So let's just come back in and put that colour in for starters. And along the side of the boat too. Down there and up there. And then we're going to put in a little cooler colour. I'm going to put a little bit of blue to that now and just suggest that it's going in for the reflection and also into this part too like that and then just a little bit of the tiller that's showing above all of that and with anything else that needs to be done to this boat we'll wait until this is all dried up before we continue so i will now um Oh, good. I'm glad you're doing the layout more, Luke. That's good. Nice to see it develop. You have to ask your nan to do the back scenes for you. I'm sure she'd love to do that. <laughs> Sorry, Sue. Right. Okay, let's come in with some... Before I really get into trouble. Let's come in with some uh, cadmium red. Now, cadmium red as opposed to vermilion. Vermilion is a, is a transparent red, but the cadmium is an opaque red, so it won't let the light radiate out as much. 
and it will be or can be a stronger mix but I'm just going to put it in as a first coat first off and just see how we get on with that and then I'm going to come in this side now once more I want to protect the white of the paper so I'm going to put that in and I'm just going to suggest that in there and leave that part of the bell but it does have a distinct scoop to it so it's going to be very very shallow and then it will come round like so and then all the way down through on this side I'm aware of time so how long we've we been going so I can't see where we are um, oh no we're doing very well my marathon is not being breached or broken okay so let's just come back in here with a bit of the reflection make it a little bit uh, indistinguishable and ripply like so and then all the way in here I actually add a bit more blue to this now I'm going to use a little bit of the uh, ultramarine blue because it's uh, going to corrupt it and make it a dirtier red and I'm going to run some of that into the top end of this as well while I'm here tap it off a little bit 45 minutes cheers um, yeah not bad I think the last one was an hour and a half um, and hopefully we might be able to beat that this time although I don't really care I just enjoy myself and having a bit of fun I'm going to put some darks in here I'm going to put a little bit more red to that got a little bit too corrupted and as I said Cadmium red very very strong color so you know it will isolate itself and set itself up in control and will take out the light and the end of the day watercolor is about allowing allowing the white to radiate through the paper and too many opaques can destroy that I'm not saying you shouldn't use them they're there to be used but just watch how you use them and how um, strong you're using them so I'm going to put a little bit of pure red into there and let that I want to put that boy in so I'm going to put that down through there and the side and being a little bit careful okay come back in with that red and let's just look at this side here and it's all in quite a bit of shade so we're going to bring that down tap it negative space leave the white water if you can which is what we've managed to do all the better for it but then I want to lift out some of this at the back here because there's quite a bit of reflective light on the side of the boat so I'm going to lift some of this pigment back and let that come out and along and down the side like so we can utilize that when we come to put those fenders in they will show up dark against it that works very very well okay oh good okay Luke well I expect to see a few of those coming out right now then the reflection I'm going to put in of the water now the water is white or pretty much white but there is a reflective side of the water here that's in shade and shadow so I'm just going to put that in there now that's too strong as it sits so I'm going to run that out tap it out with some dampness in the brush let that come through I'm not picking up enough so let's just add to that and run that all the way down the shadow side of the boat and it will start to exit out through there and now we've got that side done and that's probably set up um right where are we i'm gonna have a little slurp people sorry i got and it's not gin before you ask wendy i'd use a much bigger glass if it was gin Ah, I never thought constantly talking was going to be so dry, but it's amazing how it is. All right, I digress. Let's come back in and look at where we need. We need to pick up some of this as well, but I also need to come back in here. So for all of that, I need a quite a substantial mix. So 
I'm going to come with my favorite blue color for darts, and that is indigo. I use so much indigo, it's unbelievable. Right, I'm going to make two piles of it, there and there. Invariably, at the beginning of every new painting, you'll always see a dried puddle of indigo or a derivative using indigo. Now for that, I need to put in a little bit of my orange into one of those piles, warming it up. Now that's probably not warm enough because I'm going to put in some Indian yellow to that now and take that to a very grungy green. And I say a grungy green because exactly what it is, grungy green. But there's that nice little reflection of that into there. I've got to say, I would love to say it was deliberate, but I would be lying. That was just a little bit luck, but that very similar value and it works. I could maybe tap on that and make it a bit warmer but I don't think we really need to. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to come back into some of these dark areas of the trees. Now I'm going to go over some of the areas I've already done, but I'm not going to go over all the areas that I've done. So you're actually creating more darks, but less areas. So you're, it's more about suggesting. Okay. coming on down through and all the way down to my base which is predominantly going to be darks but I'm using quite a bit more blue indigo in the bottom there like so don't worry that if you do go over something that you formerly left it's not a problem and let's just come back up here There's quite a bit of dark up through here Like so, I want to put in um, some stronger values of the indigo. That's quite strong, but I want to put in some blues. And a little bit of cobra turquoise wants to creep in there as well. And make a separate puddle that you can't actually see, I'm afraid, which is going to be cobalt predominantly but it's going to be corrupted it's going to be corrupted by all these other colors because I want to come in on the side of the brush and put one or two cooler areas I'm going to take quite a bit of paint off of that first I just want to suggest some of these bluer colors that I can see in this foreground then come back in with some of the darks Maybe a little bit of a warmer value here and there. So uh, cobalt and some uh, lemon yellow and a little touch of Boreolin in there just to vary up the greens as they go further away. And you can see that working on rough paper is one of the reasons using this dry brush, it works so darn well. but it is the destroyer of brushes, you have been warned. All right, I'm just coming in with some real darts because I want this to be quite heavy around these people. And I'm just gonna try in and suggest that they are still there and enjoying the scene. And just pop some of these colors. And this is where one brush can be continued to be used because it is, if you, go, if you keep your brush in good condition, says he using the side of it the way I've been doing but if you do keep it in good condition then you preserve the point on the brush and that really is important too so how many are out there if there's anybody who's not come in and said hello now's the time use the chat just to come in and introduce and tell me you're sitting on the side watching it'd be nice to know that you're there and enjoying it I'm just going to take some of these darts all the way up through here like so so that you get a sense of the light is popping through but it's not dominating so we want to have a lot of darts in this area in the foreground so I'm tapping not quite the side of the brush but a little bit on the end I'm going tap 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 this way I'm using that section there you can see how it's flattened out and that's really where I'm using the brush right now and I'm just coming up through here and giving a bit more weight as this goes off the page over here. 
maybe a little heavier coming down into the back end of this roof let that sink away because the paper is still damp so that will do what it wants to do through there which is good no problem with that and um, we seem to have um, 18 people watching which is cracking I, I didn't expect so many people would be interested in watching but that's good that's very pleasing to know um, yes yeah, so anyway I'm just going to carry on down and get this isolated off now here you've got this nice straight line but it's anything but a straight line so if we just come in now and tap away in little random marks that you bring some of that dark into the space and it suggests that it all gets broken up you're not quite sure what is what and what's happening there are sort of divots and suggested bits of grass going here you can use a negative space now there's the top of the bank that runs down here so if i use this dark in a solid mass here i can tap it into the edge of that tree like that and i can also tap it this way suggesting that the grass is all nice and stemmy and long through here as it disappears down and into this other dark under here but i also want to put in a little neat piece of cobalt right in under this shadow here just there and i want that want that to run all the way in there like so and that gives me this lovely summertime a little thing to remember when you're painting summertime um well we got three generations of alfred all watching the live stream oh cool is that dad as well or mum right now i'm just bringing this coolness down into here i love this what i was going to say was then was that um in the summertime if you look at shadows under trees they are never dark in the sense that you think they're going to be they are in fact very very cool they get this lovely blue color if you look in the height of summer and a lovely summer's hot summer's afternoon you look at a big sprawling tree and you look at the color of the shadow that it leaves underneath it you'll be amazed at what you see and conversely in the winter time you think the color of cold snow would be very very pink uh, blue but it's actually quite pink very warm very violety so yeah it's always worth making little notes of these things because they will serve you well when you come to do your painting just going to come back to putting a little bit more cool blue on here on the side of this tree very very random that gives that a nice little bit of dark and then we're going to come back over with some of the other colors a little bit of lemon yellow into or oriel and i always say lemon yellow because as an oil painter i do use cadmium lemon and of course in watercolor it's oriolin that i use so i forget to tell you <laughs> what i'm using so if i ever say lemon yellow and i'm painting a watercolor just ignore my stupidity and you know that it's actually oriolin there we go i think we've got that looking quite nice a little bit of dark up into the top suggested not too heavy all right all right let's carry on and i want to come into this water this is pretty much set itself up i will come over i think with some more blue or quite light i keep seeing a lot of cobalt into some of this tree i'm going to just put a little light wash over some of this and it does set myself up for a big fall because i said just now about the lights and the darks uh, pushing ahead and that's exactly what's going to happen here so what I'm doing is I'm preempting that and I'm just taking that wash over the whole of this area again so that it's got nowhere to cause me a problem. I hope, he says. Fingers crossed and uh, suitable um, sacrifices to the gods taken care of. We hope that that will suffice and not cause me a problem. All right, if it does, I'll have to work on that pretty fast. 
I'm going to come in here with a bit more of that red and a little bit more um, a bit of Indian red and a bit of cool blue into there too just want to come and run that in down the side of this building and give that a little bit of definition down the side a bit of the brickwork it's caught the light on the front end so we're going to leave that and we're going to put a little bit extra dark in around the um, front under the eaves but for the moment we'll leave that just as it is that's all it probably will need and um, hi from Margate 1200 sorry I didn't see that come in I keep looking at it but I didn't actually see that um oh hang on it does look a little bit funny doesn't it bear with me everybody I'm gonna give you a bit of a polish up is that any better Is that better, Ben? I hadn't noticed. Sorry, my friend. Um, it's only one of these cheap old iPhones, unfortunately. I'm waiting for a specific piece of tech that has been absolutely sold out of this country and God knows how many other countries trying to get it. And I've had it on order for a month now and there's just no sign of them coming into the country. And what will happen is that... Um, this whole thing will uh, change and the whole dynamic will get better. But I do, th or had thought that um, it was better than that. So I do apologize that the quality is not as good as we had experienced before. Mm, okay, well, please bear with me, people. Um, I'm trying to, uh, I'll keep looking at these different bits and pieces and see how we can affect better quality but it's not doing too well i've only got my iphone luke that's all i've got film oh my filming me is my webcam off my laptop okay let's try that locking that focus Is that better? I don't believe it worked. Cheers, Ben. I think I, even I can see that's better. All right, you can see what I'm painting now. Shall we start again? I'm joking. Right, let's crack on then. So we've got to start putting some weight in here. So for that, I want to, I may as well use some of this actually, this warm color that I used just now. I said I wasn't going to do anything with this, but actually I'm going to lie and put some in that sort of suggest the warmth of this building. Just going to suggest that in there, not there. Don't want it in there. Just a little bit here. And then I'm going to come back in with the indigo, favorite color. And, and this time I'm going to use some raw sienna to give me my yellow content in that green gonna make it it's a little bit gungier lots of yellow to come in maybe a little orange just to assist it looking good cheers iPhone yeah it did work thanks Ben I mean I had no idea that it gone a well like that so much but it, it obviously was right now I'm just going to become quite random and putting in some of these darks. We've got to put some in through here. And I'm going to suggest some of that now. Like so. And into the edge of the water. But now I'm deliberately using the edge, flat edge of the brush as I do it. To suggest that there are uh, horizontal movements in the water itself. So any reflection mark that I make. I'm doing it little random taps like so. Just to suggest them. If you don't want them as strong as that, then when they're starting to dry, just tap them off with the damp edge of your brush like so. 
and that will break them out into the uh, area surrounding them without overdoing it they just become a little softer but because this was wet and this is wet look how that is lovely uh, harmony working through there I'm going to put a little bit of neat lemon yellow into there too just to suggest that's picking up a little bit of light there okay and we're going to start looking at the reflection of the boat one more time and just suggest a little bit darker in there could be considered a little too much and lift a little bit back out before we carry on and then come down into the area around the edge of the boat and so lots of different transitions of color you don't have to pay attention to each and every one you, you'd be pretty amazing if you could actually administer to every subtle change or nuance in this it's just too much and it can kill a painting too you can you know at the end of the day this is just about the sense and the feeling of the day and of the scene is not about absolutely capturing every flick of the wave the light it's just not about that now I'm dry brushing some of this I'm allowing some of that color that was underneath I don't want to completely replace it I'm just going to put one or two bits in this is going to be finished off yet of course but I'm just allowing the greens to mix it up a little bit like so bring it all the way through in one or two places so you get all these subtle and lovely changes and variations dragging it through white space here that i preserve doesn't matter because it's dry brush so what it's doing is allowing some of those colors to come on through we will add in some more darks and we can add these in now or later as i wish whichever we feel is works for us I'm going to come around the edge of the top of that boat like so and there's just that little dark line there I'll lift a little bit of that out there come back in very very quickly so that we don't lose the momentum and just drag that on and through in that fashion right Hope everybody's still there and still with us. I think I've put a few to sleep. Ah. Right. Let's get back into this. Bit more blue into that color there. And let's come over this side and get some strength going on in there. I want a bit of strength over the back end of this too. Through the edge of the river going away. And then we'll bring this while we've still got it nice and wet. But again, if you remember, I skated it over before. And I want to do the same thing again. So I'm going to bring that all the way down like this and on the edge there. Just one or two ripples coming through this way. And you get a lovely sense of movement in the water. And then just one or two areas that sort of matching some of these darks up in the top of the tree there we go and soften any area that you want just by adding a little bit of dampness to the brush and you can see that that just takes away some of it so you don't want to get rid of it all but sometimes you just want to mix it up a little bit and make some of it work in that way. So now there's a bit of red into this reflection here. So there's just a little bit of uh, redness from the boat overall. So I'm just going to put that in. And we had a bit of a problem there. Not too bad that we got away with it quite nicely. Let's just put one or two areas because that does stretch right the way across as a dark warm color but it's a corrupted green so if you've got a nice deep green then add a little bit of vermilion to that and that makes it a lovely uh, hot green right so and then that just enough of a difference in that light green to show up nicely 
And just one or two areas through here. Tap off that section. Right, we are closing in for the kill, as it were. It's going easy. Yeah. So, you're holding out on me. Right. I do hope we can still buy kitchen roll. <laughs> About toilet roll, kitchen roll. I'll go through tons of it. Okay, so I need to come in on the boat now and start getting some more stuff going on uh, on the side of the boat. So I'm going to put a little bit of dark shadowing in one or two places, especially on this part of this side in, in the shade. Just give that a little sense of uh, solidity as that goes along the water line and away. And then I want to come in with, um, there are three or four side tenders. So I'm going to put one in, two in, three in, and one on the back end. Leave that like that. Then we put that one in there, but I'm just going to see if I can lift the red on that, just to excite that a little bit more. That was good. And I'll come in with some uh, quinacridone gold, which is a very strong, beautiful, transparent yellow. But I'm going to use that in a conjunction with um, some uh, Indian red. That's a quite a dirty brown colour. Maybe a little bit more. And then it's just come in and suggest the side of this boat. Like so. And then over the back, that goes through the rudder. So leave that in place so that we've got that set up. We've got to come in here with some darks and some lights and some messing around. Just suggest that dark in there. And we've got one or two areas that we can just suggest through there and make that disappear into reflection. And we need to put in a little uh, dark under here. We've got the edge of there, but we haven't allowed for the way that the um, darkness of the back end disappears. So I just want to put in a little bit of shadow in there and leave that. We can add to that if we need to. And a little bit more red dark into there. And there. That's fine. That gives that a nice bit of sense of reflection. And we're going to strengthen this boat here because it's lost an awful lot um, in the overall scheme of things. I want to put a little bit of blue to that just to kill it off from pure red. And there we go. We're going to come back in. We're going to strengthen this reflection in here like that. It does get lost in the green. So I'm going to tap in a little bit of indigo just to help it mix in with this area here and make that go like so and disappear. But we want to save that lovely edge of light water that we put in. So we're going to come up to the edge with this red and then take that all the way down through to the back. But where it does get a lot lighter, remember, we're going to take that off again, come back in. I want to put a bit of lemon just through here. It got a little bit lost. I'm going to put a bit of that lemon in there just to reinforce that. Actually, got to bring some of that strength in here too. And decided not to because I think it actually should be a little bit cooler than that. It's a little bit too fiery. Okay, let that dry out. That'll be fine. So now we need to just go back in this bank and give that a little bit more grunt in the bank. So again, we're going back to the indigo blue. We're going to put in some lovely uh, Oriole into that this time. And that makes for a great deep dark green. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't really... Uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose the range would be open, wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it be? Um, 
yeah well that's good to know um i did our bi-weekly shop today traumatic as always it's traumatic whenever you do it just a little bit more so at the moment get a bit worrying when the guy at the uh, who lets you in through the door has got something that looks more like darth vader on his face um a bit worrying i'm sure it was all for the best of his protection and everybody else's so no, i wasn't moaning i just thought it was a little bit ooh, scary right just going to come in with a bit more uh, these greens are slightly different to these ones here they're a little fresher a little uh, more exciting because they are that much closer so we're going to put those in and we're going to come in with some green over here and suggest these darts into here I didn't like that orange that I first put on there so I'm actually going to come back in there and lose some of that and then that will go under there and down onto that part of the deck and I haven't put in our doorway so let's just put in our door and we still haven't put any people in yet so I'm going to start looking at those in a minute now she's in pink but i'm not going to do pink i'm going to do something like a little red like so on that one you don't need too much to make a person just enough to suggest it because you're not trying to create the portrait you are just simply trying to suggest the forms and the shapes of people like that doesn't need much more than that I need to come in with the dark underneath the um, that tarpauling on the side of the, uh, the yacht so I'm going to come in there again I'm going to put in some orange and some blue the orange and the blue is a very good way of making a dark so let's just come in there and put that in first and foremost it's a great way of making a dark color uh, and a rich dark so now we're sort of refining shapes we're coming in and we're checking all the little bits and pieces that we need to create the form and make it work right so and starts bringing it to life it's all these little bits and pieces that we um that just you know join all the dots up as it were give us what we're looking for and then the water line around the front to the front of this boat and then of course that as it comes away in the reflection and then let's do something under here we've got this little boat dock uh, here a couple of tires on it I think or whatever they are not too sure what that's going on we can put a little bit of highlight on those at the other end it's not a big deal or little posts <laughs> I'm avoiding this part like the plays you can tell but that's going to go in later we can't we can't escape it um, there is the front there which we need to put in maybe a little warmer encouraging me to get my paints out I hope so that's the idea of these Sue not just sit there and just drink your gin right there we go top of this boat and front and coming in now we are as i say we are quite literally coming to the end i hope and so do you all hope i'm sure and a little bit up there just to give that nice reflection away and this one here and then the side of this and there is a lot more dark down there which I need to address that I think and we've done nothing about this under here so I'm just going to put that in and that and a couple of other marks there and let's put the skipper in and then we're going to come in with the roof which I'm actually it is quite red but it's not red if that makes any sense at all I'm going to put that in first put that nice strong red color of the canopy in so 
but then I want to put a light lead that light through there and take the dampness of the brush onto it and lift some of that all the way down to the edge of your drawing and then let it dry then we go in with the little dark shape which is the rear of that and then we put the poles in with a little bit of gouache right at the end but I do need to come in with the reflections of these um, side fenders that's a little strong so we can tap that away and take a, a little bit of the pressure off and of course I actually forgotten this one but I want to come in with some darks as well I'm going to put that in first like that Tap, just take it off looking at over the whole thing now and seeing where you still need to do stuff still need to put bits and pieces I'm going to go for my rigger and it's about time I change the brush that one's getting a little bit hot under the collar it's been constantly used bear with me while I just search out my favorite of all favorite brushes it's in here somewhere says I actually think Wendy's been over here and stolen it hidden it from me All right, there we go we're good yes nanny do you remember saying you should do that <laughs> yes so I expect you to join our patreon group and get some real good quality stuff from me there we go, nice little bit of dark in there, and that's lovely and reflective of the light. A little bit redder. That works. And then just bring that in there and one or two other little areas on the boat just to reinforce them. Like so. And then in and under these areas here, which I did neglect a little bit to be honest. And a little bit of yellow. Still there, Ben. Right. Just looking at some of these shapes in here as well. I'm going to go for it in a minute. I'm going to put that mast in. And I'm going to, you're all going to have a lot of fun seeing that. I'm going to put a couple of bits in. I think I want to put some more darks into these trees. And I keep looking at them. And I really feel that I want to give that another go so I'm going to go for it I'm going to put in some yellow and some green and I'm going to tap of the red in there too and checking them again and let's just come in with some one or two real darks now it's amazing when you put a dark in a watercolor and you think that's good enough and it just dries up so light and you think where did that go why did I bother what happened to that so it really is sometimes you've got to go back in and check it all out and there we're going to go round up people and actually those blues that i wanted now if i'm careful i can suggest those really work nicely there we go and any of that cauliflower that i was frightened of happening has dissipated which i'm very very thankful for And let's come over to this one and do a very very similar thing just not too much of it a little bit less each time remember soften off some of the transitions in here more transitions lots of darks right down in the ground lots of heavy darks And that just helps hold all this in nicely. It did need it. I wasn't sure. I kept looking at it while I was talking to you. And I just felt that it just needed to do that. And 
And then we go back in with a few of the trunks and the darks of those at the end. Well, before I do the white, anyway, put it that way. The only thing about painting any pictures, you think you're pretty much there with it, and then you just see something else that just begs to be altered and mucked about with. And you have to go back and you can't leave it. And there's a lot of darks just coming in down here, which we've got to now sort out. Well. We've all got to start somewhere, Luke, so get painting that fairy, mate. And let's take that dark all the way over to there, but not all the way up to the top on end there, because we had that blue coming in for a purpose, and I want that to remain. And then we can get a lot of real heavy darts going in the side of it and a couple up in the top there okay that i think should do it in that regard let's just look at a bit more green and a bit more blue into some of these areas here just to give that another little tap across a little play around just a little bit darker down the side of this boat would really be nice and help it out a lot just go around it very, very carefully, just to isolate the shape. And in the front end, too, would be good. Just take it all the way through and onto the side of this one. And then some of that right there can come into the water. And then we had that dark in here, didn't we? So let's just bring that in because that will create the lovely effect of the white water. So let's take that dark all the way up through and into there like that. Now we can see our white water or the bow wave of this boat a lot easier than we did just now. And just isolate that end there of that. Just a little bit of care was needed then on that one. One or two darker marks through here, just suggest some darker parts of this water. A little bit less information each time, okay? Just to, you know, you just I's and T's now. Coming all the way through. We haven't put that dark in there, have I? I forgot that. So let's just put that in. And that's got, we're going to have one or two little marks here and little marks up in there. I don't know what they are, but we can put them in. And then we've got the uh, sort of, I'm going to put this in, but in dark, but I'm going to put some highlights in the white gouache later on. So it's just a little bit there, but that what is what I can see in the water up through there like so something of that nature as i said just now it hasn't got to be exact it just merely needs to be uh, a suggestion of what's there and i want to put in a post that i can see somewhere here i'm just going to put that in and that sort of reflected down through there tap off All right. Okay, so now we are closing down. <laughs> uh, I have so many good train photos from Twyford, but not even starting to paint them at the moment. Yeah, I get that idea. Right, I use a rigger and I use out of the tip, out of the end. And I'm going to support my hand while I do this because it's I know it's going to go horribly wrong. So I'm going to start here and just... 
hold a breath and take that all the way up through there. Well, they're pretty close. That's not too bad. And I'm going to put in one or two of the lines. Just one or two of them. Suggested. And then I want to put in the uh, these little uh, areas of the supports of this. And there's, I said, one on the front. Like so. And I'm going to reinforce the water and ripple on this side and on there but not on the other side and then I just want to put in a tap for the fender on there and there back in the reflection and one or two areas I put on here let's just suggest the top of that decks catching a little bit of light and I said that we're going to put a little bit over on there. Little mark, just suggesting some of these catch in the sun. Don't want to overdo it. And I haven't put a fence in. Sorry about that. There's not going to be a fence. <laughs> there is not going to be a fence. And there's a little sort of uh, scallopy bit across the front there. Down the side. Make it nice and pretty, nice river boat, and there's a little bit of light catching the top of that fender, and conversely in the reflection. And now I did say that we could put one or two areas in here, so I'm going to come in. I'm going to put in, just drag a little bit of material away. Not too much in. The trouble with gouache on a painting like this is it can quite easily become too much. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, sorry, Ben. <laughs> and the top of the tarpaulin. What am I thinking? Okay, I will rectify the matter. And let's just come back in with the reflection of this. Very, very quickly. A little bit darker. Lift some up. That works, I hope. And then there is a dirtier. So we're going to mix a bit of this white with a little bit of red and make this dirtier reflection of the mast coming down through so. And then we've got a light area that is in here. Okay. Is that all right, sir? Have I atoned? A little bit of light into that. Okay, I can keep going with this forever and ever and ever, I think, but I think there comes a time when you just got to stop. I think I've illustrated the point of the reflections and the lights and the darks and the movement, and you could go on and on and on and on. But I do hope that. Um, You've got something from this. I don't know what time we're at. We're at half past hour and a half. We've been going, so um, there are still one or two little bits and pieces that I need to do, and I sort of as I'm finishing up, I will talk about those. And they are just literally more eyes and tea bits, just like here across the door. You know, there's sort of like the lintel needs doing on there, and um, a little bit of a side. And a shut there so little bits like that that i haven't actually put in yet i haven't put in the white around here to be honest with you i've forgotten all about that and there should be a nice reflection on there and on there which i've missed and there <laughs> little bits and pieces that you keep seeing that you got to do um, doing a straight line is very hard. If I were to do that, it would be very wobbly. Yeah, 
Normally mine are too, Luke. Okay, so with that done, uh, if you're happy with your painting, then just sign off on it and um, get yourself ready for your next painting. And I'm going to start clearing this one up, but I do hope you got something from it, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've still seen something else that I've missed. There's always something. I didn't put that under there. That needs doing. And a little slight one down the side of that roof. There you go. So, <laughs> with that all done. Um, yeah, Jeff, thanks ever so much for tuning in. And the next one, this before you go, what I plan on doing is I'm going to be doing one either every Monday or every Thursday. Or if I have the time, I want to do two. One on a Monday, one on a Thursday evenings. I want to make one of them an absolutely regular slot. So whatever happens, you know that at 7 o'clock on one of those days is going to happen. But keep an eye open on the uh, YouTube feed and my channel. And if you're not a subscriber to my painting channel, then please consider subscribing to it because there's a lot of work goes into not just filming videos for you, but all these streams as well. And it does help me a lot to know that people are watching, enjoying and getting something from it. So with that in mind, I'm not sure what the next subject's going to be. It might be a different media uh, as well, but we'll see how it goes. And um, I would think it will probably be um, either Thursday or possibly next Monday. But I'll see how I go and uh, we'll, we'll carry on. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm going to leave the, uh, the stream running for a few more minutes. So if there's any questions you want to ask me, please send them over now. Type them out. But uh, to all of you who have been watching, thanks very much for putting up with this and putting up with me for an hour and a half. And I hopefully see each and every one of you and a few more maybe next time out. All the best. Bye-bye, Ben. Uh, really relax and follow along with you. Cheers, James. Thanks ever so much. Um, JC, thank you for joining us. Uh, I hope, uh, I don't know what time of the day it is out where you are. I think it's you from America. Um, so thanks for tuning in and, and bearing with it. Michael, uh, thank you very much. Luke, thanks for joining in. Sue as well. Wendy, I know you're still there somewhere. Thank you ever so much. John, cheers, mate. Thanks for coming in and uh, supporting it. And uh, hopefully see each and every one of you very, very soon. I will be catching up with your uh, 00 build, John, and seeing how that's going. Uh, I actually had a chat with Susanna the other day. Really nice. That was great and uh, very, very helpful. So, yeah. All the best, everybody. Catch you all soon. Bye-bye for now. Yes, they are, Ben. They are switched on. I think they're switched on. Ah, cool. That was one of uh, that was one of the reasons I decided to do an evening slot. It's early enough for people in England to get involved, but for my US followers, um, then I felt that doing a morning one here would have been out of the question. So I switched it to an evening, early evening, and it's great. I didn't realise what the time was. I should have known, but I didn't. But yeah, thanks for taking the trouble. Now I'm going to get the gin. Okay, everybody. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. L. Anders, sorry I didn't catch you in the feed before, but thanks for tuning in. All right, I guess that probably does it. 
and I'll let every one of you go and have the rest of your evenings to enjoy. Bye-bye for now. See you all next time.